Um, this is a video which I have done in the past, so I am just uh, repeating this because many people ask for it. Is uh, how do you master investing uh, or what are the questions to ask for mastering investing? So first question is uh, <coughs> what is it? Uh, is it uh, is it equity? Is it, de is it debt? Is it cryptocurrency? Is it uh, animal farm? <coughs> it, it, what is it? So right. So uh, uh, second, uh, the answer to that is, do you understand what that person is saying? If he says cryptocurrency, you have heard the word cryptocurrency. Doesn't mean you understand. Doesn't mean I understand what is cryptocurrency. So I say, oh, it's a cryptocurrency. I don't understand. So I stay away. Or I say, <coughs> I don't understand. So I will learn. Or third, I say, I don't understand, but since it is being offered by a mutual fund, I am assuming uh, there is a fund manager, SEBI has seen what it is and SEBI has approved it. Therefore, I will put a small amount of money into this cryptocurrency, right? So, these are two, three ways of reacting to it. But first of all, you have to understand what it is, because if you do not understand what it is, that causes the maximum amount of damage. There are people who do not understand how a shit fund works. There are many people who do not understand how a mutual fund works. So, they put 1 lakh and after 3 months, if they see the value at 98,000 or 94,000, then they want to withdraw saying, nay, nay, <coughs> there is some problem. In my bank FD, the value never changes. In the mutual fund, it has changed. You never told me that and they will remove the money. Nothing right or wrong. But if you do not understand what you are doing, it is bound to happen that you withdraw completely at a wrong time. This has happened. I have seen big trust doing that right at the onset of covid uh, one trust withdrew in the, on the worst possible day they withdrew about 4 crores and i was uh, the advisor called me and said will you please speak to the trustee the trustee was the trustee told me if it falls like this every month then in the one year my money will be wiped out now this is such a stupid argument but that was came from the fact that the uh, owner or the trustee just did not understand how a uh, equity market operates or how any market operates. He was a businessman and there is nothing that I could uh, do to salvage that amount. So, these things can happen. So, you decide how to react based on how much you understand and what you will do if you do not understand. You do not understand equity is fine. Somebody told you putting money in an index fund will work. Yes, maybe it will work, but you have to understand that there will be fluctuation, um, there will be huge standard deviation and all those things. So, be ready for it. At least understand those things before you invest. If you do not understand any of those things, maybe you should stick to a bank fixed deposit. There is nothing else that you should be investing because everything real estate, gold, equity, everything will have a high standard deviation. If you do not understand standard deviation, it means you do not understand investing, right? That it is that bad. The second question to ask is is it investing? Is it speculating? Is it gambling? Right? Make the distinction very clear. And the distinction comes from uh, asking how long do I have to hold it? Uh, what is the upside? What is the downside? What, uh, right? These are these are all important questions. Is it gambling or is it uh, speculation? Right? You have to know the difference between the three. Uh, and then the question is, how long do I have to hold? What is the upside and how long do I have to hold? What is the downside and can it go to zero? Right? Some investments can never go to zero. Like if you buy an annuity, it can never go to zero. You will get a pension for the rest of your life. Even if you live till the age of 114, you will keep getting a pension. Right? That's what it says for your lifetime. So, can it go to zero? Is it possible that I withdraw and it becomes zero? Uh, I am doing a systematic withdrawal and it goes, can it go to zero? What is the downside? What is the downside that if I do not touch and it can still go to zero? What is the lock-in? Is there a period of time for which I just cannot withdraw, right? Uh, and uh, if I or if I is there a period of time for which I cannot withdraw? And is there a period of time for in which if I withdraw, I will pay a withdrawal penalty, right? Exit load. Do I pay an exit load? How much is the exit load? How much can it be? Right. Ask these questions because you do not ask these questions and say, oh, the advisor cheated me. Advisor did not cheat you. I, maybe the advisor did not know. Right? But you did not ask. You cannot be guilty. You cannot be uh, innocent saying, I did not ask and therefore he did not say. He is not duty bound to say. He may not even know that these are the questions to ask. What happens if your advisor himself does not know that these are the questions to ask? So, ask these questions. What is the upside? What is the downside? What is the lock-in? What is the ex uh, exit penalty? 
penalty right uh, can it be inherited is there a nomination possible should i make it joint with my wife should i make it joint with my husband whatever ask all those questions what is the advantages what are the disadvantages what happens if i don't have a nominee right if i don't know whom to nominate should i make my children uh, joint with this or should i make them only nominees what is the risk is it possible that there is a fraud and the whole money is lost right ask these questions because you don't ask nobody tells you and then you say oh nobody told me nobody is duty bound to tell you you are bound to know many of these things you are bound to know that equity has standard deviation not every advisor is going to remind you that equity has standard deviation you, if you tell him or her that you have been investing for a long long time that person will assume that you understand what is equity many people don't right so it is completely up to you and the advisor to decide at what level you want to start talking about right from base level or you assume that oh uh, I, I i i'm in fifth standard and address me like a fifth standard kid or are you a kg class kid also uh, in, in many uh, in, uh, fields they show uh, projected returns right if you are trying to buy a unit linked policy they will show you 30 years return so then you ask him or her what is the risk of using historical returns will it always happen will it not happen what is the probability of it happening do i have to review it every 2 years 3 years 5 years right ask those questions and uh, are you saying that this will definitely happen or is it a, is it a cost illustration or is it a return illustration how are you saying this will definitely happen like for example there can be a insurance policy where that is the sum assured it can be an extremely small amount but that sum assured you will get uh, if uh, on maturity it may be a small amount right but it you will get that amount that's very important you will get a, red, a bonus at the end of the period those are the advantages disadvantages i'm not getting into but at least understand the product that you are buying uh also understand that uh, every asset class has a different reason why it will uh, do well or not do well if india grows very well indian equity markets will do well so will debt but if india doesn't grow but internationally there is growth those companies which are in exports will do well if the international if there is an international slowdown and therefore lot of money comes into india therefore indian markets will do well so understanding the difference in the macro ask the ask these questions can it is it possible that i'll get a sub bank uh, rate right I, i'm getting 7% in the bank over the next 10 20 years will i get a rate less than 7% will i get a, a rate of 42% one year and a minus 4% the next year will all these uh, will all the standard deviation happen what is the risk that it happens in the initial stage and therefore it screws up my total return that i get in this product ask all these questions these are all questions which uh, one should be forced to ask because if you don't ask nobody is going to answer those questions uh, if there's a bonds uh, if there's a bond fund is there anything called holding a bond fund to maturity is it different from holding a bond to maturity people if you don't know this right then there are many people who do not know that uh, when you say direct scheme it means going to the website of the mutual fund and investing that is a direct scheme uh but uh, i see investing through icsa direct is not uh, investing in a direct scheme believe it or not many people do not know the difference so ask these questions equip yourself before you start investing right uh, what is the maximum downside risk what is the upside risk what happens if i got 42% should i withdraw and put it somewhere will you be there to give me advice or am i on my own after i buy the product no harm in asking this question also because uh, if he is a rm in the bank is bound to leave the bank in a year or two or three and this product also um, for a beginning investor i think you should pick up a glossary uh, i mean my book has a glossary but uh, you can pick up a glossary from somewhere uh, maybe it could be available free offline online uh, and understand all the terminology that is used understand uh, what that person says i ask the person that uh, when the market fluctuates what will i what will you do for me when the, you're selling this uh, product which is a third party product and you are a bank but tell me whom should i get in touch with in the um, current uh, concerned mutual fund or insurance will somebody there be able to guide me when there is a fall should i be investing more or should i switch between debt and equity what should i do who will be there to guide me because i am sure that you will not be there
so when you ask a ask a investment advisor all these questions a he will take you seriously or she will take you seriously say some of these answers i have some of these questions have an answer for some of these questions i do not have an answer for but at least you will be sure that the client uh, that the advisor is not taking you for a ride and then and then if you uh, think you still don't want to buy it then you say oh my cousin works for jp morgan or morgan stanley or anybody and say, is is a derivative trader in singapore this sounds intimidating enough and say i will talk to him or her and then only get back to you and another cousin is an attorney in new york and she deals with uh, these kind of uh, products regularly so i will ask both of them so please send me an email uh, i'll send it to both of them and they will have a look at it and then i will uh, take a decision uh this is the one of the best ways to push an rm and uh, force him to perform but largely all these questions are not meant just for the rm these are meant for you do you understand the answers that is another thing if somebody says oh 24% upside and 0% downside or 6% downside do you understand whether it 24 and 6 are right all right so all these questions you have to ask Uh, and you have to equip yourself to be able to understand the replies you don't want to do this you don't want to do any of these things best go to a uti index fund and do an sip and keep learning after you finish learning come back watch some of my other videos and start investing thank you